right. Well, thanks for listening. If you are listening in self-isolation, today's guest is somebody that's been here before, but somebody I think we all need to hear from again right now. <laughs> Joining <laughs> us is the fabulous Leanne Lang, host of Living Your Life with Leanne Lang podcast, and most importantly, a fitness guru. And that's what you're here to talk to us about today. <laughs> Look at her blushing. You are. I know. I know. Like the that's so funny because so many people thought I was gonna be, you know, doing training and personal coaching and all the stuff when I left television. And like I am like the anti like person like that. I really think like I would say like I'm a health and wellness advocate. And the fact is like I have just interviewed thousands and thousands of trainers and health professionals. So now I just feel like I'm sharing my knowledge. Like the one thing I'm like like really clear on is like, hey guys, like I I'm just kind of going with what I'm doing. So if you want to follow on, that's awesome. But like, I really, I feel bad because there's so many people out there, like trainers that I've worked with or, you know, that I've wanted to hire and do things with, and they've got the education in the background. And I'm like, no, they're the health professionals. I'm just like a really big advocate for it. Does that make any sense? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm like, I, I kind of go back and forth with it. Well, I, the thing is, I kind of like that about you, though, because you're, you're being 100 percent real. So your workouts like you're it's I don't know. There's nothing fake about it. Not that there's <laughs> something fake with health professionals, but it's just it takes that. I don't know how to say it. The seriousness of it out. Maybe I guess that's right. what it's it more is. relatable. It's more relatable. But you two have that in common, I think, because you're both very athletic women. And I always talk to Jenna when I need fitness tips or advice because I feel like she's more of an expert than I am because she grew up in an athletic world. So mm -hmm. it does sort of make you an expert. I don't care what you say. You no, no. I get that. And I and I really appreciate that. And listen, when I saw your picture, Jesse, after you did my workout like that, those are the things that really make me smile. Like that makes me smile. And the feedback that I've been getting from the people who have been doing the workouts that are saying, like, thank you so much. Like you're getting me off the couch. You're making me accountable. I love that there's so many people doing it. Uh, you give me fresh ideas like that to me is like the way that I'm able to give back right now. I think we're all looking for a bit of a way to kind of be, be there for people and listen, I was going to be working out anyway. Like I work out every day anyway, so I might as well share the information and share what I'm doing and it's going to help people. And I think what came is that I started to notice when I would do Instagram posts and I would put like what I did for my workout or especially if I was working out from home, because I think a lot of people struggle with that when they don't have a lot of stuff. I started to see that a lot of people, you know, you can see who say like if people are saving your post, do you know what I mean? Like you can see it. Well, in the insights, I could see that people were saving the workouts. And so I felt like, okay, people are going back to it or they're using it. So might as well at this point, just kind of share it and do it live. So it's made me accountable. Like I'm doing it every morning, Monday to Friday at 9am. And at 9am, I better be there ready to go with the new workout because there's people waiting on the other on the other end, right? So so that's been an interesting thing. And the thing is, too, is like I will give kudos to where I got the exercise from. I'm like, hey, this one's from like Adam at the fitness lab. He showed me this. And I did these BOSUs with Tanya, like from Personalized Fitness, like 10 years ago, and I still use them. Right. So it's kind of like playing with all of the different workouts from all of the different trainers that I've worked with and just incorporating it into what I feel like doing that day. And you're offering them for free, which I think is really important in a time right now where so many people are losing their jobs and they want to hold on to those uh, last few cents that they have for as long as they have. And this gives them they don't have to, you know, pay anything and to get in a really good workout that mentally helps so much. Like oh, after yeah. doing your workout, I just I felt like a, a new person. I think everybody feels that, right? It doesn't matter where you're working out, but you you know there's that mental struggle to get to the workout, but after it, that you know that stupid meme, no one's ever regretted a hard workout, and how many times do you feel, oh my God, I'm so glad I did that, even though you were on this close to not? And I think we're all, well, a lot of us are feeling that, right? And it's so hard, and I, things that I've learned over the last two years being away from television, sometimes the more you sit the harder it is to get up. Like I used to, I remember, I think I talked to you guys about this, but like I used to, I couldn't understand how people who sat all day at a desk wouldn't want to get up and go work out at the end of the day. And then once I started to be like at a desk and working and realizing like how tired you get from doing nothing and from sitting all day, it's really hard 
to kind of yeah. go, okay, I've been sitting all day. Let's go do, let's get up and do, you know, an activity or movement. And the, the same thing, right? You're at home and like to have to go, like I go down into the basement, but like some days that could feel like a mile away. Like, do I, do I really want to go all the way down the stairs <laughs> to go to the basement to work out? So you're kind of doing that. And I, and I appreciate from the people that, that have been on there and there's been people that have been on there every day. It's like, it's, that's the thing. It's their accountability. And I will call them out because some of them have said, I want to be here every day. So it's kind of like, I'll wait till I see their names pop up and be like, okay, we can get started, you know? So it's, it's, I think it's sometimes you got to play a mind game. It's sometimes it's just mind tricks with yourself to get you through it. But I mean, Jesse, like you said, right? Like when it's done, you feel so much better. Like you can move on with the day or attack the day in a different way. And so, you know, you hope that you're able to give that to people. Open that bottle of wine guilt free. <laughs> that's really leave it to Jenna to tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> but, but but to be honest with you, that's like a lot of us. Right. Yeah. Like and, and for me, it's it's, you know, and gosh, Jamie, my youngest, has been baking a lot like she that's one of her elective classes that she can do over the course of the day when, you know, it's like off of the computer and your phones. And so I've given them electives and she's chosen to like do home ec, <laughs> like baking. <laughs> so there's and there's never baked stuff in the house like I don't bake and we don't usually have time for that. So she's been, and you know, and I've been eating it. And so I'm like, okay, well, at least the workout's done. I don't feel as guilty when I'm having a massive like piece of her chocolate pumpkin cake or the cookies she made. Like there's something to it. You know, it's just, it's, you, it's, you give and take. So you know, it's wait, making a little side, easier. Sidebar about home ec. Uh, when I was in high school, one of the ways people knew I was gay was because I would sneak out of gym class to go <laughs> spy in the home ec class window to see what they were cooking that day. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you just holding up scissors? Me? No, it was the mic. I was oh. I was just fiddling. I know. <laughs> right. I realized how distracting that was and that you can actually see me. Um, the one thing, too, I noticed is that sometimes you have your daughter join you. Yes, that's Jamie. And that's Jamie. Okay. And I, the thing that I loved about that is I see on Facebook so many parents complaining about having to keep their children entertained and having to do this. And I, I understand. I couldn't imagine having kids right now. Oh, I really yeah. couldn't. But what Leanne's doing with her daughter is getting her exercise going. You know, it's kind of like a puppy. A puppy's going to get into trouble at home and drive you nuts if you don't give them a workout. So, you know, maybe some people might think about getting their kids to join in too. There have been like I actually know some of the people whose kids like I know like at least four or five of the names that come in that they're doing it with their kids. Uh, and then I just got another message on Facebook from someone and I didn't know, but her 12 year old son's been doing them. And 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 she messaged me to say, you know, we were with you all week. And then we went back on Saturday morning. He got up and was like, let's do another workout. So we went back on your Facebook page and did another workout together. And she was like, this is the best bonding time that I've had with my son in a long time. So, I mean, that's great you know, as well. The reason, so this is interesting how Jamie ended up on, on my workouts with me. So first off, you got to keep in mind, like my kids are both like very athletic and Jamie was my gymnast. So she was the one that was following in my footsteps, um, for quite some time until last year when she stepped away from gymnastics, but she was training four hours a day, like five days a week. So she knows what it's like to condition and train and kind of be really active. And so it's always been in our household, like you have to do a physical activity. And so when we came up with our schedule of what the days were going to look like in, you know, in this new world we're living in, you know, it was like 10 to 1130 is like schoolwork, like real schoolwork, like the math or the assignments that you have, then you have like an hour break and then you have your electives which I was mentioning could be baking or writing or art or whatever they wanted to do. And then from three to four is mandatory phys ed. So it's either work out in the basement or it's going outside and going for like Andy should be running. They both play soccer. So it was three to four was their, um, was their mandatory phys ed. And then after four, the day was theirs. They could do what they wanted to. But as it so happens is that Jamie's got a bunch of friends who play Roblox do you guys know? So it's one of the games they build things in in this game. So it's like you're on this game, but there's all your friends are on it with you. And it seemed like the time that all of her friends were on were, was right around that three to four o'clock. So slowly I started to realize that she was saying, oh, I'll work out with you now. Because then I realized <laughs> that three is when she was supposed to be doing it. She wanted to be on with her friends. And she was like, well, I already did my workout. You know, so I was like, that was that was a little conniving, but I, I'll take it, you know, um, and it gets her out of bed. So but it, it came it, about with me not asking her to do it. It came about with her trying to find a time to do her workout so she could get back on her computer and play roadblocks with her friends. Well, that makes sense. 
Yeah. Um, during these quarantine times, how do you how important do you think it is for parents to, you know, make sure that their kids, even if they don't have athletic kids, are getting some sort of physical, you know, physical. Wow, I'm having troubles with my words move today. It. Move yeah, it. Yeah, they need to move. move it. <laughs> so. Okay, so you know what's interesting is as we've been going through this whole new world of, and, and the COVID nineteen, I've I've switched a number of my podcast guests. So I had I my my bookings were like months in advance, and you know in the time that I was booking them, none of none of they were all very different topics. In any case, I've really switched and rearranged the guests and held held off on of episodes that I have currently ready to go. Have booked new people in just because I think they're more kind of they're better for what we're going through right now. And I've had on in the last couple of weeks, three podcast guests, which would completely and totally, if you listen to them, Jenna, you wouldn't even ask me that question anymore because it comes down to the fact that movement right now is the, one of the most critical things that people need to be doing uh, as to what's going to fuel them, what's going to heal them, what's going to keep them in a better mental state. And so movement, and it doesn't need to be that you think you're exercising. It needs to just be a movement of any sort that you are moving your body and what, and the triggers from it. I had this woman on Kelly McGonigal. She uh, is out at Stanford university. I found her because I originally booked her in to talk about stress like a couple months ago and she has like 20 million views on YouTube on her TED talk all, all about stress so I had booked her in originally for that and then of course as all of this happened we kind of shifted the topics but her whole thing is the joy the courage the hope that you find in simply moving your body um, and just listening to her it's like you want to shake people who aren't realizing that the the best thing for their mental health right now is to get their blood moving, to get their body moving, to get, you know, their entire systems going. So it's not even like they have to look at it like exercise, like find something that you enjoy doing and don't think of it as exercise. If you're, if you're going out for a walk, you're just, you're going out for a walk because you need fresh air and you want a good conversation and you need a, a different scenery. Um, you know, if you're, it, it she just had a different outlook on it so that we're not forcing ourselves to look at it like exercise. It's more like we're just healing and moving our bodies so that it helps with our own mental clarity. It, it all comes, everything comes back to the mental health and what we're dealing with. Did she have any suggestions for, you know, teens that aren't necessarily athletic and are a little tend to be a little on the lethargic side, you know, what to do and what ideas to have them moving their bodies. You know, it's great that you sit down and read five books in a day. I am not taking away that you're exercising your mind that way, but it's sometimes hard to get certain type of people to want to move, you know? Yeah. And, and the thing that I've learned from uh, some of my other guests, and I just had Mr. Uh, Mr. Canada, he was a Mr. Olympia, Ben Pakulski, his podcast is called The Muscle Intelligence, and I'm going to be re releasing him in like a week or two. Uh, and his was, you cannot force them. Like, if you say you have to, chances are it will never happen. If you uh, make a suggestion or ask if they have or they haven't, it's not going to happen. It's, it's, you have to be able to trigger the why it's going to be beneficial for you to do it. But if you just say to your kids, go outside, you need to, you need to exercise. Right. Really not, like you're, they're going to be like, you know, depending on how old they are, depending, it's going to depend on the answer or how they talk back to you about doing that. It, it's, it's almost like asking them, how do you want to feel or where do you think this is going to go? Or, or do you want to come out of this the other end and go, I could have done this or I could have done that or worked on these things. And instead you're going to look back on how much time you've spent sitting on your butt in front of a computer screen or on your phone and go and, and look back on it without regret to say, I made the most of that time. So there's an opportunity, there's such an opportunity right now for people to come out of this feeling physically a lot better than maybe when they started this. So, but to, to tell them that they have to, not gonna, like, no. Yeah. Not gonna happen. To figure it out for themselves, right? Like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Um, right. But I'm glad you highlighted, and now this is a whole other podcast, but that you highlighted the connection between exercise or physical movement and mental health, because I feel like in the past five years, those two things have been separated in society with this whole fat acceptance movement as fat doesn't mean you're unhealthy and mental health conversations are through the roof now, but people have separated the two and they should not be separated. No, it's, it's part of the probably the top three things for any any mental health any interview that I have done with any health professional uh, breath like sleep and movement are your critical components take nutrition out of it 
yeah. breath, the, the ability to breathe, the ability to go to breathe in and breathe out and be able to do that with a conscious awareness of the fact that you are breathing is like one of the most critical parts of what makes us who we are and how we can heal ourselves physically and mentally breath that we're able to sleep and to recover and movement exercise anything like even when I went with um, the trauma centers and the PTSDs and the memory clinics and every single health professional has has talked about the fact that movement is such a critical component it it it, it heals it can heal it it's what it's able to do to your system is just, it's so important and they say it's one of the leading things as to how we best cope with mental illness and our mental health Get outside, breathe, move, move your body, walk. Yeah. And breathing like, is something that we can all appreciate right now, I think. <laughs> I think a lot of people, but a lot of people are having a hard time breathing. A lot of people can't catch their breath. A lot of people right now feel like there's like a, a like a truck, like on sitting on top of them. Like a lot of people can't catch their breath right now. The anxiety and the stress and the unknown, uh, panic attacks, anxiety attacks, fear, uncertainty, like discomfort, like it makes breathing really difficult. But if you have the ability to just sit for a minute and, and focus on your breath within a couple of deep breaths, I think they're saying like within three of your deep inhales and exhales, you're changing the brain chemistry. Like you're changing the way things are happening in your body and in your head. It's so. completely true because I've made a point of every day uh, after dinner going down because I'm right by the water right now, like right by the ocean, going down there, sitting on a rock and just like pretty much sitting in peace and quiet. Um, I think that just, you know, I'm not conscious of my breath. However, it does give you a chance to breathe. And with the anxiety and the like heaviness of the news all the time, that's really, really important. We were talking about this before, too, that uh, I made a rule. I watch the Trudeau talk show in the morning. And then after that, I'm off the news because it's, you know, it's not doing anything for my health. And again, just talking about it, my breath stops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I Well, the, the news is horrific right now, right? Like, right. It's, take what you need to. And that's a, a lot of things. Take what you need, take any of the current updated information and then shut it off. You know? Yeah. And so, if you need the entertainment, you watch the imbecile that's leading the United States right now, and you 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 kind of it is my, kind of mind, mind blowing. On reporters. Oh, it's 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 horrific. It is horrific what's going on down there. Yeah. So skip the morning news and instead watch Leanne's workout, which is what we're <laughs> talking about. I kind of realized we never even explained what the hell we just dove right in. So every day at 9 a.m., Leanne does Facebook Live workouts that you can follow along. Uh, Jenna, thank you for telling me about them because I was – okay, here I'm going to be honest now. At first – I was resistant to try because I know you have a gymnastic background and I thought they were going to be so like high complicated choreography because I find a lot of the aerobic at home workouts are quite complicated and you have to do the damn thing eight times before you know the moves. So I was like, <laughs> but despite what I, what I project, I am still a boy. I'm not that coordinated, you know? So I was like, I don't want to do this dancey shit, but they're not dancey. They're simple movements. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm not, there's no dance. Uh, like, okay. I'll be honest. Like for, if you're like a Zumba lover or anything like that, I'm sure there are a lot of Zumba online classes for you to go to. Or if you're like into like the step-by-step -step aerobics, like, you know, the aerobic competitions from the 1980s, like that's not what we're doing either. It's, it's fundamental, like fundamental movements. And I just learned because I, I needed my own kind of I needed my own trainer and that became my timer. So I have two apps on my phone. One is called Tabata and one is called Gym Boss. And those are the two timers that I use for every workout. I did my workout today. I used my Gym Boss and I set my intervals. And so the Tabata is already a built in. And I think this is what you guys did. I think you tried the Tabata cardio, right? Yeah. So Tabata card. So Tabata in itself is like what it counts for is the same exercise done eight times. You go 20 seconds on. 10 seconds off and you repeat it eight times. So the total is like four minutes. And so what I've done and 
And some people will just do the one. I do like a eight to 10 different Tabatas in our workout. So it's, you know, 30 some 32 minutes if we're doing the eight. And if you can go a little bit longer, we'll go a little bit longer. So and I just so you are honestly repeating something eight times through, but it's exhausting because you are expected over that time. It's just a short 20 seconds to go full out. And it just it gets different parts. It's a great way to get your cardio going. It's a good way to get your sweat. And so from that, it, it's it could be jump squats and it could be push ups and it could be, um, you know, a certain core exercise, mountain climbers. So I try to be able to vary it up and, and I'm really trying to do it. So like you can have a beginner, a medium and advanced level to do things and also know that there's a lot of people out there that don't have equipment. So it's not like I'm going to say, pick up your 25 pound, you know, dumbbells and here we go. So you're really trying to be as creative as you can, but you can do so much with your own body weight. You, you really don't need the gym. So that's kind of what I've been doing. So, and if you have bands or if you have weights, I'll show you ways to add them in. Yeah. But that you definitely, I'm not like an aerobics kind of, zoom, uh, no, I'm like, get the exercise done kind of mold the body the way you're hoping to be able to do it, tighten up places and have a good sweat. So besides, that's pretty much it. Do, besides the variations, and you don't just do variations if someone doesn't have equipment, but you said level too. It's what I loved about those because you get to kind of go at your own pace and build your strength, which is always great when you can notice that you are having results because you can move to the different stages. That's always encouraging as well. Um, but what I liked is I, because I came home and I like tried to start running again, because how am I going to get this cardio in? And my old injuries, my body just was like, no, no, no. So when I did your workout, it was enough cardio that I didn't feel as bad not going for a run and putting my body through stress it doesn't need to go through. Right. I mean, and I remember like you're a soccer player, so you're used to, right. you're used to running. And you're used yeah. to running in sprints. So like, and I think what's going to be great is once the weather gets nicer, I mean, I know you're out West right now, but is to incorporate the intervals into how you're going to start running. Like for you, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go out and do a full half hour go, you know, but you could start incorporating by the timer. Like you go two minutes and go at, you know, and go at 60, 70% and then walk for a minute, you know, like there's ways right. that you can vary it up to play, to play it up. And so I've kind of just done that and kind of gone with that attitude as I've been doing, as I've been doing the workouts. You know what yeah. else? So don't discount just a straight up old man walk because I have bad knees, so I can't <laughs> really jog either. And I've been going for long ass walks. And when you get to like the 45 minute mark, you're feeling it like walks are a steady. Uh, so if nothing else, get out there and walk. But if you want to sweat, I was struggling the same way as Jenna. So I was really happy to find your workouts. So what did you do? So Jesse, when you did it, like, were you, were you pushing yourself? Like, did you find, cause sometimes oh, yeah. you start it off and you're like, oh, this is pretty good for like sets one, two, three, and four. And then by the time you're in like seven and eight, you're, you're dying. I was, well, you saw the picture. I couldn't even open my eyes, but I was, I, before I started it, I said to Jenna, that was, I have, that was meant as other things, by the way, there. Right? I know, yeah, I know. Right. what. <laughs> I said to Jenna, I was ready with the pause button because I was ready to need a longer break than the 10 seconds. Okay. Um, and Jenna's like, no, you wimp, push yourself. So I had Jenna's annoying voice in my head. So I was like, no, don't hit the pause. So I didn't hit the pause and whoo, it's a workout. But I was able to keep up. Like I, I got through the whole thing. I felt amazing. Um, so it was just hard enough. Like it was hard hey, though. Yeah. Jesse, I have a question for you. How many times during that workout did you literally curse Leanne out? I was like, shut up, Leanne. When she's like, okay, just two more. And I'm like, shut yeah. up. <laughs> or she kept saying, so she'd say, you guys are going to hate me for this. And I'd be like, bring it, bitch. And I was like <laughs> trying to be all warrior mode. But one thing, one thing I did have a question for you. Um, you, you're, I like when you take a break, you're like, uh, take a sip. That's your word. Take a sip of water yeah. if you need it. And I remember one time I did a spin class at good life and the instructor was like shaming people for drinking water. And she's like, you know, if you're hydrated enough, you should be able to get through this workout without taking a sip. And I was like, that's kind of aggressive because I always heard water is good during a workout. Um, is okay, she crazy? I'll, I'll be, no, she's not crazy. You wow. should be hydrated. Yeah. You should be hydrated enough. It's, it's kind of like, um, you, yeah, you can. I think, I think I say it and I don't drink water. So like I, if I'm taking a sip, it's like a tiny, tiny sip just to keep myself thinking about what's coming up next. Uh, it's not water though. What is it? Vodka? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't, I don't drink. I, I don't know if we it went through this on the last podcast. Like I don't drink water. I'm trying so, so, so hard to be able to drink a cup of water a day. So it's like a, a big effort for me. Um, so yeah, when I say sip, like I literally am just touching the water 
to my mouth and that's pretty much it. I think for me, it's just, I think it's people's habits. They're used to just doing stuff or stopping a set and taking a sip. So I'm not going to mess up with that. And, and it gives people a breather. I think the difference too is, is that sometimes on these apps or with these like the paid people, they're paid to just to show you, right? They're not doing, I don't know if they're always doing it. Like this is my workout. Like this is my workout of the day also. So I'm doing it with you. So like I'm grunting and sweating and out of breath and sometimes can't talk. Like, so it's not like I'm pretending like it's like, come on guys, you can do it. Like I'm struggling (laughs) just as much. Right. And I'm trying to get my workout in at the same time. So it's not like I'm not feeling what everyone else is feeling. But what is that with the water? Why? Like, because I'd never heard that before. Is it is it that if you drink water, you're going to get less of a pa- pa- punch out of your workout? Or why? No, no but you heart? should, if, if you're hydrated enough, you shouldn't need it. You should be able to go in and work out and then hydrate yourself after. after. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, yes. I mean, it depends on how much sweat you're losing. Listen, if you're doing a spin class and you're, you know, and you're thirsty, like, I, this is the thing is like, sometimes people just aren't thirsty. They're just, they're just drinking from habit. They're used to it, but it's not like they're perched and, you know, it's not like their mouth is dry and they're dying for water. Your body should, if you're hydrated enough, you should be totally fine to do that. It's very similar to like parents who give their kids Gatorade, like playing a hockey game. Like their kids are out there for 45 (laughs) seconds, like 45 (laughs) second shifts. Like it's not, they, they're, they don't need, they're not missing that many electrolytes at those ages to, to do that. Right. If they're in a two Gatorade and a half hour practice, for great. Hangovers. Gatorade was made for hangovers. What's That's your flavor, right. Jenna? Which is your uh, Gatorade flavor? You know what? Honestly, I, I never drink the stuff, uh, yeah. but I do. It's blue. It's blue. It's blue. Yeah. Jenna's upgraded to Pedialyte now. Oh, <laughs> Gatorade doesn't cut it. Well, you wow. know, in soccer, though, I was playing soccer in Alabama and it was hotter than hell. And you know what? I never drank water at halftime. I never wow. we'd sometimes have very watered, watered down Gatorade. Mm-hmm. But instead, they had like electrolyte pills. So if it was really, really hot, we'd take one of those at halftime, feel like a new new human being and go back out there. But you're right. Now that I think of it, I never used to drink water at halftime. It wasn't until after the game that I'd slam back mm-hmm. water for the rest of the night. Wow. Yeah. I'm so glad I asked that because I, I was a couple years ago and I always thought she was like the craziest instructor ever. <laughs> the other thing I noticed that you don't do is you don't wear shoes during your workouts. Yeah. No, well, I, I typically do when I'm at the gym, but well, yeah, course, no. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even notice it actually. I think it's just, um, that's just habit. Like I've been working out out of the house usually on the weekends for quite some time. I, I don't know why I just didn't feel like it was necessary. Um, and it's also, and I've learned from Adam Bracken actually at the fitness lab, he's got the three different centers. Uh, it's really good for your feet and your core and everything for the feet to actually be on the ground and have movement. And, and it's not like we're pounding, like there's really not much yeah. pounding that's going on. So I felt like there was no need to have, um, no need to have the shoes. Yeah. I, I didn't noticed, even notice that. I noticed that with you too, Leanne and immediately took my shoes off and I will tell you my hips and everything felt so much better doing workouts without shoes on because it just it's felt different. more natural. Yeah, I have a you're... friend that does like a lot of hit and he will work out without shoes on as well. Yeah. So maybe it is a new thing that everyone's I... doing. Yeah. Well, there's just a lot more research and science into the way our bodies have now are now functioning. Right. And if you saw like, even look at the marathoner, did you guys right. remember like the marathoner who was doing it in like these shoes that were almost like barefoot? Like it was, Oh like, yeah. You, you, like it, 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 they're realizing just the, the way our bodies are meant to move. They're not meant to always be in these tight shoes with the leverage and the, like our right. hips and our knee joints and stuff. Sometimes that's a, a, that's a big part of it. So if you can like, just like try one or two without it, you'll, you'll feel it. It'll feel different at first, but you might feel like you you're getting um kind of a different sensation especially if you're if you're jumping and then landing back down as to how the ankle and the foot and everything kind of really absorbs itself so those oh, stabilizers i'm going to try it bare yeah. feet i put my shoes on because i have hardwood floors so on sock feet it could be dangerous but you know bare feet you could do it yeah no go barefoot yeah i go barefoot. find a lot of sneakers now aren't even that great for your foot anyways <laughs> Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I need orthotics. I don't have them. Am I doing more harm by wearing really crappy sneakers that just look good? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, right. I don't. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you about food now, yeah. because uh, 
I was so proud of the work I was doing at the gym. I was getting gains. Jenna squeezed my arm one day and made a surprised face at how big my arm had gotten. So I had been eating protein. You like how I just wanted to get that in there again, eh, Jenna? Uh, <laughs> so now that I'm not able to use heavy weights, I've noticed already some veins aren't popping like they were. And I know all you need is body weight. Do you have any advice for what somebody like me should be eating to not gain fit, fat, but also maintain muscle? Okay, so then Jesse, this is like my absolute honest answer. This is where I feel like I don't want to go over the health professionals who know the actual science of the foods and the the differences between the proteins and stuff. So like for me, I would say to you, just like most people, protein is best, is it's great to consume after you've had that workout. And so I'll have eggs, um, you know, or some tuna or something. So I, you definitely need to keep up your protein. But you know, try to, uh, this is what I'm going to say, because they all say this to me. It's just, it's really coming down to limiting the sugars and the processed foods. Oh, right? the sugars. See, it's that's sugar. my like, weakness. It's, so right there, like if you're asking, and any of them, I know I I'll, I feel safe in saying this, but, you know, up the protein. Um, and honestly, it's it's limiting the sugars and um, and the processed food. Now, if that being said, um, okay, so this uh, so on monday i'm not sure when this is airing but on monday um, on monday <laughs> oh, okay so so okay so this morning i will have released a podcast with eliza kingsford who is uh she wrote the book brain um brain health brain health weight loss so it's all in the brain like how we eat how our nervous system is and for a lot of people especially going through what they are right now in isolation they there's two triggers and what it's doing to the nervous system as to how and what you're going to grab in the kitchen some people will go to the fridge and get out the fruits and the veggies some people will go straight to the pantry and get out the sugary packaged processed foods like it's a difference and it really is if you notice when you go to the kitchen are you going to the fridge or are you going to the pantry a really big difference right there um, the wine rack <laughs> <laughs> or you're doing the wine or you're doing um the wine like, which is well. also sugar but, right yeah but but what you can think of is is also for you like jesse like you can eat as much of the healthy stuff your body will eventually tell you it's full it doesn't want anymore so like i'll go and i'll start eating a whole bunch of carrots and i'll just eat carrots and carrots and carrots until all of a sudden my body's like yeah i'm good i don't eat anymore you know so especially with what we're going to be going through. And I realize that you want to be able to keep up the muscle. So for sure, you're going to need to keep up that protein. But at the end of the day, what's going to show on the body is how much sugar and processed foods you've been eating, because that's oh, where the extra layer, I that's where the extra that layers. Are coming. And no matter what you're going to do, like even if you're getting your body weight up and you're doing a lot more resistance, the sugar and the pro and the processed food, that's what's going to be over top of your stomach, right? That's going to be that line of, I know you're going to want your six pack, right? Especially by summer because you know, and I, I know, know it's you. under yeah. there. I can feel it. So but there is it that is there. Yeah, it's there. Like you have worked it out. So no matter how much strength or weights you're adding, right? Like your muscles are there. The only thing that's going to show them is the lack of sugar, processed food, and shit oh, that you're I hate putting that. in. Sugar and is I, my, I wish, my huge yeah. weakness. Yeah. Like I had to. Like well, we were excited to go to Punta Cana before all of this happened. And so Tony and I kind of had made an effort, you know, I still want to be able to feel good in a bathing suit. And it was amazing what happened when we really made an effort to just really limit the sugars and stuff over like about a month or six weeks out and the diet Cokes and the stupid stuff. And it, 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 no matter what, like my workouts didn't change, Jesse, my food, the only thing that's really going to shift everything is, is what you're consuming. So basically what she's trying to say without saying is stop drinking so much, Jesse. Uh, it's uh, not just what drinking. What are you drinking? But what wine. are you drinking? Red wine. Yeah, the, yeah that's that, there's high in sugar, right? And if then after the red wine. Vodka can... soda. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I've been drinking, yeah. just straight vodka, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> With like a little bit of olive juice in it. Oh, my myself, like, God. A Oh my God! How do you it's do that? It's not just drinking though; it's the snacking that comes after it. Then you get start eating the olives. Then there's salt. Ugh. Yeah, and then it's just sitting. And so then the sugar from the wine is sitting there, and then you're adding in the stuff that goes on top of it. And then where's it going to get absorbed? It's going to get stored as fat. Right. Yeah. Do you and have, and have any? Um, have you ever had any quarantine snacks that you've been going to? Like when you do get cravings for the bad stuff? Other well, than that carrots. Well, I, okay. So to be honest, like, honestly, the Jamie baking, like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, that's really, that's thrown a wrench in it because we <laughs> never have, like, we really don't have baked stuff in the house. And so it's really like, I'm noticing like, oh my God, I'm, and now, and the thing is, is what happens in our brains is as soon as we get, get it, it's, it's like an immediate, we now want it more. Like when I don't have it and I'll be perfectly honest with like when I'm not eating sweets and snacks and like, and sugary stuff, I don't actually 
crave it or need it or want it. But once you start having it, it's like, it's immediate. It's an immediate, oh, like the body then wants more. And so it's been hard, like, you know, it's like, gosh, so she's baking again. Like, what what I, like so I'm, and you know, and I want to, and, and she's like, well, can you try it? And of course I do. And then I'm just like, oh my God, it's so good. And so I take a bigger slice and then I add another cut. Like, I, I think I had like a slice and a cookie the other day or two. And I'm just like, I would never, ever do this because I just, it wasn't, it's not around. It's like, and I don't miss it. And yeah, so it's, I think it's okay for people to feel that way right now. I mean, people look to uh, for food for comfort and stressful times and, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm getting so fat. I'm, I'm like, you know what? You need to give yourself a little bit of a break. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like, but that's what my podcast is on that's being released today is on stress eating. Um, but perfect. All, right. So I think it, it was very timely and I'm, and I'm glad that it's finally coming out. But it's not so much on stress eating. It's also on board. Like you could be stressed. It's one thing. You're eating because you're bored. Because what yeah. else are you going to do, right? So how can you change your pattern so that you're not finding yourself in the kitchen? I bet so many people don't even realize it, but they realize it like they're w- wandering aimlessly and they always just end up in the kitchen or they end up with the fridge open standing there and they don't know how they got there. Well, their brain's been like going, go to the kitchen. That's where you're going to you know, fulfill something like we're bored, we're stressed like this is, and there are other things that you could be doing. So as you will learn, if you're taking in the podcast and what I just mentioned about breath, but like you have to ask yourself, will it nourish me? Will it heal me? Is this going to be good for me? You ask yourself different questions. Do I really need to go and have it? Or can I wait like a minute or two and see if the emotion passes or if the craving passes, which it should do. It's becoming more aware that you're doing it. We're just mindlessly eating. That's the problem right now is like we're bored. So, and, and, and what I feel bad about is, and what I'm worried about is it's, they're not going to realize how much is compounding, but you've worked so hard. Like people started the year, like 2020 was supposed to be epic, right? It was going to be like an epic year and like people off to a decent start. And you know, they had these goals and they were doing well. And and then they're going to just get back into a depressive state once they realize that they're back into their bad old eating habits and patterns. And then the weight's coming back on and then they're going to get depressed or, you know, unmotivated. And then we're falling right back into the tailspin again. And so it's going to be about asking yourself and being aware, do I need to be in the kitchen right now? Is there something else I can be doing? What if I go outside and walk around the block once? Maybe this will pass. And it's being more mindful of of what it is that you're choosing to do. So like I said, choose the carrots, eat and don't and just eat as many as you want until your body's like, yeah, we're good. But it's going to come to it's it comes down to the awareness factor. Just put a full length mirror in your fridge so that when you open it, you have to see what you look like and you'll probably just close it again. <laughs> but, you know, I think at do a very- not call Jesse for therapy, people. No, do don't. Not. Don't. Yeah. I'll be the first yeah. to say that. Uh, don't call me at all, actually. So <laughs> one thing uh, that I think is really important, though, is that in this whole fit fitness journey and nutrition and stuff like attracts like you said it a few times now and every time you do something you get more energy or if you don't do something you get even more lethargic and I even think about rest days if you're someone that works out regularly you know rest days are important but for me I'll take a rest day and it's that much harder to get back the day after when you would think the rest day would revitalize you it doesn't work that way a lot of the time Not always, but you could try something different on those rest days. Like, so yesterday was my rest day and I did a yoga. Like I, I was, I started taking uh, classes at uh, yoga town and they've done a great job uh, putting stuff to YouTube. And and so I was like, okay, I don't feel like going down into the basement. Like that was one of those days. I don't feel like going downstairs, but I need to just feel something. And so you do something that's just different than your typical you know, workout day. So I did yoga. Yeah. So do something. See, I don't, on rest days, I sit on the couch and I don't move. That's the problem. Yeah. See, so, but movement is still the critical component. So don't look at it as exercise. Look at it as like, I need some fresh air. Let's go walk around the block. Yeah. So Jenna mentioned, sorry, Jenna, I saw you were going to say something, but I don't want to forget what you were just said about people being allowed to feel fat or give yourself a mental break, allow yourself to eat an extra cookie right now, because this is a horrible time in history. That's true, but you got to be careful because it's a slippery slope. And I see some articles going around being like, if you don't want to work out right now, that's fine. Take a few yeah. weeks off. And I'm like, eee, you know, a few weeks. I, yeah. But <laughs> you know I, look, it, we're this. so, we're so hard on ourselves, right? We're so hard on ourselves. So I think there's, there's a point where you, 
right now, I think, and, and I've talked about this in our house, our main mission right now is to keep everyone alive and healthy. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> that's like, that's the number one thing. Like in the, in the big, big picture, I want to come out of this healthy and with all of my family members and the unknown and the uncertainty is like, God forbid, like we, we have to do our part to make sure that that's actually going to happen. I'm of the, I'm of the thinking that I want to, when this is all said and done and the doors open back up, I want to feel good about myself that I did everything I could in this time to give myself a gift of doing something better, of becoming more uh, and not coming out of it with regret. So yes, a lot of people will opt to screw it. Life sucks right now. I've lost my job. I have no income. Uh, you know, it's it's like life is shit. It's horrible. So you can do that and opt to just eat and opt to not exercise and opt to not move and just sit there. And in six, seven weeks, let's see how you feel because it's going to be way harder for you to come out of it. And our mental health system, like it's, it's, it's going to be the biggest factor in all of this. But so yes, if you choose to do that, you can choose to do that or you can choose to be able to come out of this in weeks or months from now and go, I use this opportunity to be a better version of myself. And, and what you will find is you might fight this for like two, three weeks of doing it, but then you might find that you find more positive in things and you're not looking at things like this is so horrific and horrible. And maybe because you start to feel better, your walks are a little bit longer and you have sunshine on you. Like there's such a domino effect for trying to do the right thing. So no, I don't want to come off as all the end all be all go ex eat healthy. I'm just saying you could be giving yourself the added, you, you're giving yourself a different advantage by choosing to make some of these positive changes. Well, it's huge. Yeah. But why, why do you, either of you think though, that people throw away exercise first, because I find that's the first thing to go, right? People are, oh, I'm not going to the gym when really that's the thing you should be doing most of all. I think. Oh. I don't know. I don't know why people do it because they're lazy. They get depressed. They don't want to move. Yeah, They'd rather they lie in bed all day for... because they know they can. You know, this is a great opportunity and I think a great time for people to improve on themselves. You don't have anyone else except for your family and you to worry about. You don't have to worry about that project at work. You don't have to worry about landing that client. You don't have to, you know, you have time to really focus on yourself. And the better you are, the better you can be for the people around you. So if you are stuck, in ho at, stuck at home as a mother or a father and you have kids, the better you are. I think uh, the more the kids will look up to you and the more the kids will be like, okay, then this isn't that bad at all. Look, there's opportunities to learn how to play an instrument or, you know, I can finally uh, work on my juggling skills for soccer so that when season starts up again, I won't be the first one out. I'll be the last one out. Just it's opportunity. It's so like true. That. Like Jenna, it's, it's so, it's so true. And it doesn't, and and use this. It doesn't have to be about working out or being fit or coming out of this feeling. It, it, it is. It's about finding a passion right now and putting your focus in on that. Yeah. It's learning a new instrument, learning a new skill, uh, starting to write, start like there's so many things that you can actually do. But I know that you mentioned the parenting and and it's the one thing that I've been really key on ever since I became a mom is I needed to take care of myself first so that I could be a better mother and wife and friend. Like I honestly think the better I feel, the better I am with my kids. But as Eliza is going to, is going to say, especially in the podcast that comes out today is when you ask any adults who has food issues, where it stemmed from, a lot of them will say something happened in their childhood. Like there was something that triggered in their childhood that changed the process of how they view food, whether it's a positive way, a negative way. And if you're going to look back in 20, 15 years from now, talking to all the kids who were like between the ages of like six and 18 right now and see where their pattern is 20 years from now and what triggered it, this 2020 coronavirus will play a critical factor in how they view food or if it's the trigger for how they deal with food or uh, you know their relationship with food. And so you need to be incredibly, this is where the parenting is going to come in is to be able to have the kids have a healthier view of how food can nourish them. It can help them right now. It doesn't need to be detrimental to them because right now is a critical point for parents to realize that they are shaping how their children are going to cope and view food 20 years down the road. And, and we all who deal with it will remember a trigger or something that happened in childhood. And so it's being cognizant of that and aware that this is going to happen to this generation also. Well, it's a great opportunity for to teach children how to cook like you said and to teach like this is why you need a vegetable because you know life gets busy 
po- a pre-corona, life gets busy and, you know, everyone gets around to the table to eat. But mom just put something together because she didn't have time. She's not explaining why she put broccoli along with like a protein along with, you know. So now's the chance to go, OK, this is why I make your meals the way I make. Do you want to help me? Do you want to learn about food? It's a, I mean, it's a survival skill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't want you don't want to release your child to the university and have them live off KD all the time. You know, maybe they can put KD with broccoli in it. <laughs> Jenna's it got broccoli on the brain. I do. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to go steam some broccoli now. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. There's so much great opportunity right now, I think, to improve yourself and, and so much opportunity to spend time with loved ones and really get to know each other. Yeah. I feel like if you're in a good place, this is wonderful. And, right. you know, and I really like, I like hanging out with my husband and my kids are still at an age where we're like, they're 15 and 12 where they still like hanging out with us. So we're, I think we're in the best case scenario because my kids are independent and I don't have to worry about what they're doing as uh, other than monitoring their tech time. Uh, and we still like hanging out. I think this is incredibly, and I've thought about this for people who are in unhealthy relationships, yeah. abusive, like, 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 there's, there's a, there's a, like, there's so many different variables as to how and why we're able to cope or not cope the way we are. Like, y- y- I know I, I didn't want to open up like a can of worms right there. Right. But like, yeah, work and harness the relationships that you're in and enjoy your family and the family time. And yet for others, it's right. like, this is, this is hell. Yeah, now. especially if you're, I just always think of kids where school was the break, school was yeah. the safe uh, place, and yeah. now that's been taken or away work. from them. Yeah, like it's, yeah. there's there's so many, so many variables. Yeah. Yeah. But? But our government is time. trying to do their best to like provide support and give women that are in abusive relationships safe places to go. I hope hotels start to open their doors to them and giving them a place to shelter so that they don't have to stay at home in an abusive relationship. Yeah. And hopefully some of these women are saved by the end of this. Or men. Yeah. Or men, too. Yes, or men, too. Um, but exercise is a great way to deal with stress and get aggression out. So if you are in a bad situation, <laughs> try Leanne's 9 a.m. workout on Facebook Live. <laughs> yeah. That and was even an if you awesome like... save there, Jesse. I love that. Right. Yeah. And even if you like sleeping in, she still has them on her Facebook page, so you can go back. Because I'm like, I'm not waking up at 6 a.m. to do this workout. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. You got the three hour, the difference. Yeah. No. And I think I appreciate that because people are watching them later. Like they'll sign in. They'll be like, Hey, we're here. I can't wait to do this later. So that's, that's nice too. Yeah. Oh, I have a little suggestion. Okay. Me after the workout, you should go back and, or not, you should, I don't want to tell you what to do, but (laughs) it would help me as I was looking through them to see what exercises were done or specifically what body parts you worked that day. Because I assume you make it up as you go along sometimes, right? Um, no, actually I've been really good. I have it all written out. I probably, I, maybe I should do that. Yeah. Like this is so new, right? I've been two and a half, two weeks, two and a half weeks doing it. I love it. I love it. And, but Thursday did, you wrote cardio Tabata or whatever. And that's why I knew that was the one, but the others, they didn't say specifically what it was working on that day. Yeah. I think I've said like Tabata circuit or arms. Like, yeah, you're absolutely right. I probably should. Um, I probably should do that. Uh, like I'm learning, I am honestly learning as I go, um, and learning combinations that people like. So that's a really good idea. I will, uh, cause I, I write them out beforehand. Like I actually spend like, it's just, it's become a little bit of time, time consuming, right. To be able to have a different workout every day. That's different. Like I I've messaged some of my like personal trainer friends and like, I get it now. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's work. <laughs> well, I don't it think you should work. give away all your secret tricks of each exercise, no. but just say, you know, it's butt today or thighs or whatever. Yeah, No, I, I should do that. Like, uh, there's nothing for me to hide. Like, honestly, I'd rather, I, I can do that. I'm in a place where I can do that. Um, so that's a good idea. And this, yeah. these are great videos. I've told my two sisters about them. They are going to try one today or tomorrow. Jenna told me, so it's spreading. I think you may yeah. have a whole new career after this. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. We're all having to pivot right now uh, right. with what's going on. Yeah. So that's funny. Yeah, you're going to but... combine. You're going to end up with an empire with your podcasts yeah. that are so informative. See? Combined yeah. with your workout. Crazy. See, I'm a health and community. wellness advocate. The Living right. Your Life with Leanne Lang has all these guests that I just talked about as to w- things that you can do. So, and you know what? When I'm working out, it gives me the opportunity to talk about my guests sometimes too, right? To be like, hey, listen, go, because that is my baby. Like, I still feel like I'm 20 years of being 20 some years now, like of, of a journalistic background of, of storytelling and interviewing people. So it allows me to kind of talk about it that way too, you know? Oh, quickly, like, how was Christy Alley? Was that awesome? 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, she's she our really new best is. friend. I can imagine. Yeah. I was texting with her. Yes, I was <laughs> because um, she's all worried that Trump fans or like anti-Trump people are gonna hate me and Jenna because she's a Trumper. But we didn't talk about that. We left that off the interview. She's a Trumper? I know. Isn't that disappointing? Oh. But Jenna made a good point about that. I just said, you know what? Just because someone likes someone's political beliefs doesn't mean they align all their beliefs with them. So, yeah, maybe she likes something I was doing, but she's also not racist. So there's that. Like, I don't know. I just don't like to judge people on their political beliefs right but now. But I found it t- as- telling that she was so she's so worried that we're going to get attacked by her anti-Trumpers. So obviously she feels some guilt for being a Trump supporter. Right. Right. <laughs> but she was a fun time. That's another good one to listen to if you've got nothing to do. She gives some secrets about how and why networks cancel shows and... Oh, that's what cool. She tells us what she's doing to work out during quarantine, too. <laughs> what is she Didn't doing? Didn't she say she get up and walks to the kitchen? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she said. When a, a scene she likes on Netflix comes on, she waves her hands in the air really hard. Yikes. <laughs> 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 well, Stick Leanne, we look forward to doing your workouts. I'm so good. Honestly, guys, I love that you're doing them. So when you do them, like message or just put a comment in, I love seeing them. But uh, that it, that it's fun. It, you know what? It's just it's fun. And I know people are there and it's kind of just building a different relationship with people. Yeah. And, and they're very good workouts. As someone who has done a lot of different workouts in my life and a lot of different training, they're amazing. They're really awesome. Oh, see, that that means the world to me, Jenna. Like, that is yeah. awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and I can attest to that as someone who's very clumsy and can't follow choreography. They're equally as awesome. So you Yay. will they're not boring. Love it. Love it. They're for everybody. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Leanne Lang, Living Your Life. That's her podcast. Go listen to it. Hey, maybe while you're working out. Why not? Yeah, but that'd be like an over, that'd be an overload. Too much Leanne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be like, oh my God, get rid of this girl. Yeah. Yeah, no, podcasts are great for cleaning when you're cleaning. They were really good for driving on your commute to and from work. Yeah. Right. You know, if yeah, I, it's like, too. yeah, I don't know how people, when people are listening now, but it's interesting. It's interesting times ah, for sure. Those days when we had traffic. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. When we sat through traffic. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for chatting with us, Leanne. Let's all raise our waters. Actually, I don't have... Oh, wait a second. Quick, 30 seconds. Why did you say diet sodas are bad? Because they're low calorie, no sugar. Oh, sweetie, sweetie. You know, is that, that, aspir- that aspartame is killing you. What and I'm addicted to it. It, it, it. No. None like, of it's good. Yeah, Well, no. this one is aspartame. Um, Does it make yeah. you fat? It holds your fat. Oh! <gasps> I'm throwing yeah. it over here. <laughs> That's a whole I, other conversation, but really I want to learn about that. But I'm like a Diet Coke and a, and a sweet and low girl. Like I sweet and low my coffee and and it's and, and I know how bad it is, but it's like it, the brain. It's addict it's an addictive chem it's addictive. And that's 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 my issue. But if if I can like you know those six weeks that I told you Tony and I changed up things, I stopped drinking Diet Cokes for that six weeks. Yeah. And I, I will tell you right now, Jesse, it made a difference. Oh, it made a, it made a difference. I'm going to switch back to those booblies. I yep. like those. Those are okay, right? Yeah, I think those are better. Waters. Yep. All yep. Right. Okay, sorry. Now lift your water oh, again, yeah. Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne Cheers, Lang. guys. I love chatting with you guys. Okay. Cheers. Cheers.